credentialed in Australia. The leader of the House on a point of order. Mr Speaker. Well, let's go to our female panel. They're a breath of fresh air in a very, very difficult and confused world. From the Liberal Party, Conchetta, or the government, Conchetta Fioravanti Wells, and Labor's Tanya Plibersek. Ladies, thank you for your time. Conchetta, I will go to you first because I raised here with both you and Tanya, it might have been last week or the week before, this necessary issue of vaccination. People writing to me, and I told you this, about the impossibility of getting access to vaccines in those eight local government areas in South and South West Sydney, Tanya has been very critical of the vaccine rollout. Now, I've had chemists or community pharmacies writing to me saying in a very multicultural word, a world, the community pharmacy is often the first point of reference. But the community pharmacies who wanted to join in the vaccine rollout haven't been invited to participate. Conchetta, I know as a senator, you are a patron for a number of these areas in those seats in Western, southwestern Sydney. Following this discussion, you raised this, I know, with the Health Minister. Tell us what has now happened. Have these people got better access to vaccination? Yes, they do, Alan. Any pharmacy that wants to be part of the rollout that fits the criteria can participate. And we know how important, and you're absolutely correct, how important uh, community pharmacies are, especially in these areas. And we're pleased that over 3,000 pharmacies are on board. And in these local government areas in southwestern Sydney, uh, we have now about 48 pharmacies that have been fast tracked and we are progressively rolling out this program and I'm very, very pleased uh, right. about the uptake in relation to it. OK. Well, let's go to Tanya because, Conchetta, Tanya, see, we're talking about the here and now. We mm. all would have thought if we wanted vaccination, this would have been done ages ago. She wrote to me, Conchetta, on the 25th of July with a staggering figure that there were only 118 community pharmacies vaccinating across the country at that date. And the AstraZeneca vaccines will only be available to these pharmacies by mid-August and Moderna from September. Tanya Plibersek, is this a stroll out or a roll out? Well, I think stroll out's quite right, Alan. It's so disappointing. I mean, Conchetta spoke about 3,000, I think, pharmacies that are on board. I'd ask her how many of those pharmacies are actually vaccinating people as we speak. This has yeah. uh, been months. Uh, and we, we know, Alan, that the government from the beginning did not make enough deals with enough companies to get enough doses to get the jabs in people's arms. And we see the results of that now in Sydney. I think we're in our sixth week of lockdown, um, southwestern Sydney, so many cases, uh, so okay. much confusion, so so much confusion. heartache, so many businesses yeah. struggling. It's, that is it's the, the fault of the slow rollout. I mean, you, Tania, look, confusion. I've got this correspondence I'm sure you have every day. See, Conchetta Gladys Berejiklian says she wants six million vaccines by the end of August. That's what she said yesterday. Mm -hmm. Today's the fifth. That would be 222,000 jabs a day in New South Wales. Is our freedom hanging on this, Conchetta? Sadly, Alan, yes. People are suffering from uh, lockdown fatigue, they're living in fear and they're wondering when it's all going to end. But they're also at the same time comparing us with other countries that are still getting COVID cases but are getting on with life and are opening up. I know, look, uh, I don't start me. I mean, Tanya, you're not in government. From your observation, therefore, you don't have all this stuff in front of you. From your observation, what do you think we're being told about the way out of lockdown. Scott Morrison said 70 to 80% vaccination, 70 to 80% when no country, well, the two little countries in the world have reached any of those figures. Malta, I think, is at 87. And on the last figures available for the flu vaccine, I remember telling everyone on air to get the jab, only 71% of Australians took the flu jab. But Berejiklian seems to be saying it's case numbers and vaccination levels. Can you understand, Tanya Blibersek, the utter confusion and disappointment within the public? I think people are confused and they're frightened and they're worried about themselves, yep. their families, their yep. businesses, yep. their communities. Yep. But the way through this, Alan, is to get more people vaccinated. We're at 15% now. We're about 80th in the world um, for the speed of our vaccination rollout. But just on that, so Tanya, disappointing because we, we did so well in the early though. days. 
Yeah. Let me interrupt you, though, Carney. As you know, <laughs> I've got letters from people in regional New South Wales. I spoke to Helen Dalton earlier this week. They want to be vaccinated. Yes. And they've had the yeah. vaccination vaccine taken from them and yeah. brought into Sydney. I mean, God, but, help. But this is, hey? this is the frustrating thing, Alan. Someone described it to me as gaslighting today. The government's saying, go out, get vaccinated. And then they try yep. and book an appointment to get vaccinated. And they're told... No, not here, Ab not this week, absolutely five weeks' right. time, not sure Abs where. Yep, uh, that, that's right. That, it's, te it, it's, not, it's not a lack of willingness on behalf no. of a lot of people. It's, no. Uh, and they don't know where to go to get the vaccine. No, that's it. That's it. You're dead right. Conchetta, look, you and your staff, I know, this woman does a hell of a job as a senator for New South Wales. You've been direct calling, as I'm sure members of Tanya's party have been, because these are basically Labor seats, but you've been mm. ringing households in these electorates. How are they managing Conchetta on 750 bucks a week with no end in sight? Alan, it's very hard. Their livelihoods are being impacted by politicians and bureaucrats who still draw a salary, lockdown or no lockdown. And that's why I think, Alan, it's time for us as politicians to lead by example and do take a pay cut. Absolutely, I agree. I mean, Carney, your these are your electorates, I know, out there, Labor electorates. Uh, two questions to you. What are they telling you? But can I just ask you about eight cases in Melbourne and a seven-day lockdown with the World Health Organisation telling us today that 55 mm -hmm. people across Australia are serious, 99% of active cases are not in the ICU. How do business, Tanya, do business when they don't know whether a government tomorrow isn't going to intervene and lock them down? Well, Alan, I think what we've found out in Sydney is that a short, sharp lockdown is preferable to the weeks that we've been experiencing. And mm. uh, I, I know it's awful to go back into lockdown, but the people of Melbourne have had such a lot of it in the last year and a half. But yeah, fine, shorter, fine. sharper is better than longer, and that's what we're experiencing in, in Sydney. But if you were the right? Prime Minister, if you were the Prime Minister... Uh, would you just stand up and say this will happen or would you have understanding of the waste that business is facing, the demoralisation of families, kids who can't go to school, the social interaction that education brings, all this being denied to kids and the damage that's likely being done to them emotionally and psychologically. Shouldn't we have a political leader just saying gently, now, listen, look, there is hope out there. We've got a very good health system. And if you get sick, make sure you see a doctor, talk to your mum and dad and look down the track, blah, blah, blah. Who, I asked this last question, I asked you both last week, Tanya. Can you give them some hope? Well, I, I do want to send a very special message to the HSC kids who are really yes. facing right now. Yes. They don't know what's going to happen with their trial no. exams. They don't know what's oh. happening with their final exams. The message to them is we know you've been working really hard. Uh, next year is going to be better. Um, life won't always be like this. Thank you for all the hard work you've been doing. And remember to thank your teachers and your mum and dad as well for the yeah, support absolutely. they've been showing Conchetta, you. Conchetta, Conchetta a note of hope. Could you give it to us? Well, Alan, the only thing is that we have to make the decision and accept that we cannot achieve zero cases. We have to learn to live with this virus. And sadly, though, Alan, the way things are going, I have I fear that the cure will be worse than the disease, given the, decim uh, the Absolutely. decimation Absolutely. of livelihoods and especially That's on it. our mental, mental uh, well-being. Okay. Absolutely, Conchetta. That's a good way to finish. I think we're reaching the point where the cure is worse than these. Always lovely to talk to you both. See you next week. Thank you, Conchetta, and thank you, Thanks Tanya. You we'll be back after the break with something which is magnificent. There are people you've never heard of winning medals in Tokyo in the last 24 hours. Back after the break.